Hello, people of YouTube. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Thanks for watching this video. This is just going to be a quick little video today to talk about um, earlier this afternoon, this morning, this afternoon at noon. Noon is when the morning ends. Earlier this afternoon, um, the good folks at CMON, uh, Tiago and Andrea, uh, who are in charge of the United games that we know and love here on the channel, uh, had their first big video uh, with their first big trailer showcasing DC Superheroes United and, you know, just the, the the initial hype video that they do that gets people pumped up for the upcoming uh, Game Found campaign, which is happening in five days-ish. So I wanted to just quickly go over all the stuff they shared in case you missed it, a little, little crib notes version of what was revealed and what wasn't revealed and all that fun stuff. So we're just going to quickly go through. I have some images here that I captured from the video that we can take a look at together and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so first off, you know, we started with all the standard uh, things. This was an hour long video and like usual, because Simon is great at showmanship, you know, they spent the first half hour just kind of talking us through everything, waiting until our anticipation was absolutely at levels of salivation before they dropped the bombshell. So first they showed us this nice little gallery of all the characters together, which I don't think we've had yet. So this is very nice to see. I like this. Um, and it gives us a great sort of uh, sense of scale of everybody, too. Tiago talked a little bit about how you can't tell from this picture, but they made sure to scale Darkseid up appropriately so that he is much bigger than the average bear because Darkseid's a big guy. He's even bigger physically than Superman, I think. So they want to give him his due. Uh, so even though you can't see that in this image, trust us, Darkseid's going to be properly big. They also gave us a little gallery here of all 10 locations, which we have not seen altogether. And I remember when all the gameplay videos were coming out, I was counting all the new locations I saw, and I'm like, wait a minute, there's more than eight here. Uh, and it really threw me for a loop. I'm like, what's going on? But uh, it's basically like what everybody has told me uh, in the Facebook group, that Apocalypse and Hall of Doom are just kind of there as these extra little things that tie in with Darkseid and Lex Luthor. You are more than welcome to mix them into any game. If you're a total masochist, you know, you can feel free to add Apocalypse to any of your games just uh, to make things uh, even more difficult. But uh, yeah, that's the first core box that's going to come with 10 locations in it, which is pretty groovy. I noticed something here that uh, I wanted to call attention to because in all the gameplay videos I've seen, all of the locations and the villain dashboards had rounded edges which was very different. Marvel United does not have rounded edges. Uh, it has just sharp edges, 90 degree angles. And this image here, they all have regular 90 degree sharp edges. So I don't know if those rounded edges were just prototypes or not, but to be honest, I kind of liked the idea of the locations and dashboards being rounded so that they don't get creased or bent. Uh, it's just sort of easier to maintain the integrity of that cardboard because it is not the thickest cardboard to begin with. So I wouldn't mind if they went with rounded edges, but uh, I'm okay if they don't. They also gave us this nice little look at the Big Child creatives having painted all the characters, which is always great, and, and sets some unrealistic expectations because there is no way in hell anybody but Big Child is going to make this look like this. Um, even though there are some amazing painters in the Marvel United community, uh, this is just... Wow. I, this looks so good, I don't even want my miniatures to look like this because I, I want to have some level of uh, uncanny valley to them. This is this is too good. Then they showed a nice little close-up of the Two-Face coin, and Tiago even had one with him, and he was flipping it around, and they were being very coy about this coin. They wouldn't tell us where in the game you'll have the opportunity to use it. They were very, very dodgy about the Two-Face coin, but I love the way it looks. I love the way Lady Gotham has the chibi look even on the coin it's just it's adorable this is this game is just adorable and this addition is something that tiago kind of pushed for like yeah let's have a metal coin why not and i'm glad he did because it's a great looking little trinket to just add to the overall joy that is the united system and then we got our trailer and our trailer showed off a lot of good stuff and it was very entertaining seeing the little wonder woman chibi rush rush up to dark side and punch him in the throat <laughs> I just found that really fun. Uh, but then, of course, the trailer ended with the first big expansion reveal. And this is always exciting in any United campaign. And the first expansion they revealed is, I think, to the surprise of few people, Teen Titans. And here it is. Here's the Teen Titans expansion box. Very 
different setup of in terms of boxes, right, than what we're used to with Marvel. But uh, it looks pretty, especially the sides, the, the edge of the box, is it fits right in with the Marvel United stuff. I personally was a bit too old. Uh, I didn't grow up with the whole Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go phenomenon, right? Because this team really became, a, they became like almost as big as the Ninja Turtles at one point with the kids. Like people loved Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go. I kind of missed out on that, even though I heard they're great cartoons and I want to check them out because I, I still love me a good cartoon. But I just uh, was not in the age bracket for that. So I didn't experience the Teen Titans fever. However, I know millions of people have. So I think this is absolutely a wise choice for your first big hype box to really get people on board because there are there might be people out there who don't care for the Justice League but really grew up and love and and adore and cherish the Teen Titans like that type of fan exists a fan who's like yeah Superman I could take or leave but Starfire hell yeah absolutely this was a wise choice uh to add into the first season and just to be the first expansion that they announce I personally find I think Starfire is one of my favorite DC heroes I think she's really cool, so I'm glad that, you know, she showed up. That makes me happy. Then they gave us this look at all the characters that come in the box. So you have Raven, Beast Boy, Starfire, and the Dick Grayson version of Robin, as well as the villains Deathstroke and Trigon. And I'm going to be honest, I have never heard of Trigon. Uh, that is this giant demon man here. Uh, I love when the United Games introduce me to characters that I had no prior knowledge of. That's always a lot of fun. So I'm glad I know who Trigon is now. I'm a little bit surprised and shocked, if I'm going to be honest, that we got such a huge character in the very first expansion of the very first season. I mean, I know Simon's not going to tip their hand right now and say, we have more seasons to come. Like, that's not how it works. They, they can't do that. They just have to talk about the season at hand. I get that they wouldn't say, like, in future seasons, we might do this. Like, no, they are, they're really putting all their cards on the table right now. Uh, and introducing huge characters like Trigon. There's a size comparison that Tiago did where he's holding up the two miniatures. There's Robin next to Trigon. And Trigon is massive. I am pretty sure he's bigger than a Sentinel. I don't know if that's even... Is that miniature going to be as big as Galactus? That doesn't feel right. Nobody should be as big as Galactus. Except maybe the Anti-Monitor can be as big as Galactus because he's, he's a big deal, literally and figuratively. But man, this Trigon piece looks huge huge i yeah i'm just thrown for a loop by this character i've never heard of coming in and just shaking up the system like this so even though this is an expansion you can bet it's going to be a chunky box because it's got to hold this handsome gent then they gave us a look at the hero cards and the first thing a lot of people picked up on including myself here was that hey that robin card doesn't just say robin it says robin parentheses dick Grayson to possibly imply that there will be more Robins down the road. Now, I always assumed that whatever Dick Grayson shows up in this would just be Nightwing, right? To me, Nightwing is Dick Grayson now. And I, I've, even though Dick Grayson is the Robin I grew up with, I understand that he is now usually almost always Nightwing. Even Tim Drake is the second Robin that I grew up with, isn't Robin anymore. I think he's Red Hood now. Um, or no, that's Jason Todd. Tim Drake is, uh, is something else now. He's Red Robin, I think. And now it's Damian Wayne, Batman's son, who is just plain old vanilla Robin. Robin, there's been so many Robins, man. Robin is like a minimum wage job, like revolving door. Someone goes in, someone comes out. But there we go. We know we have at least one version of Robin. And hey, maybe one day in the future, we can look forward to a game of DC United where it's just four heroes and every one of them is a Robin. That would be a lot of fun. He also comes with Eskrima Sticks, uh, the only character in this box to come with equipment. Uh, Raven as well. They show off some of her cards. And I believe Andrea said Raven's deck is 100% unique cards. There are no repeat cards in her deck. They all do a different thing. So she sounds like she's going to be basically Doctor Strange on crack right? So many different magical abilities and things. She's got a telepathy card, which we've seen in other heroes before. The force field, she's going to be able to protect people. Uh, lots of fun there. Starfire. Uh, interesting color scheme with Starfire. The white and the purple. I, I would never have guessed that. I would have guessed orange and purple for her cards. But again, this white is part of her Teen Titans kind of look, and that's just not a look I was familiar with. 
that she's immune to telepathy, which is great, and she's got this energy absorption, so she can gain tokens and absorb damage. Uh, but then the most complex of all is Beast Boy. Uh, in the corner here, Beast Boy is going to be able to turn into different animals, and as you can see right here, he's got his own miniature deck of eight animal cards to go alongside his regular 12 deck of hero cards. So the way this is going to work is you can choose an animal form that Beast Boy will take, and then you put that form next to you, and as long as that's your form, you can do different abilities, or you might have some cards in your hero deck that say, perform the actions on your animal form card. So like just one example here is the the bull. While in this form, you may perform one free punch action in each location you enter for the first time during each hero turn. So you're literally charging through things like a bull or the owl can look at the top card of any deck of your choice, which is really cool. We've never seen that before. We've seen look at master plan cards, but never top card of any deck. That is that can make him so flexible when there's, you know, villains who are complicated villains like somebody like Galactus and the Heralds where there might be a lot of decks happening on the table and you can look at any one of those, including looking at hero decks just to see what kind of strategies you have coming up. That owl is going to be an MVP. Um, and then we can't see in the back there what the whale and the mouse and the cheetah and the T-Rex can do, but um, I want to play as Beast Boy and then take the cheetah animal form and then use that to fight the actual cheetah villain because that sounds like fun. But what a unique character. It looks like they're going in a similar vein to what they did with um, Husk in season three, even though I haven't got my hands on her cards yet. So it could be, I could be completely not knowing what I'm talking about. But just the level of complexity Husk seem to have, it looks like they're doing the same thing here. Now, my only question is, how are they going to make Beast Boy different from Animal Man, because Animal Man could also um, assume the abilities of animals. I don't think he actually morphed into them, but he assumed their abilities. So I'm curious to see, first of all, if he's even going to be in this game. He might not. But second of all, how they'd make him different from Beast Boy. Then they gave us a look at some of the villain cards, not all. Now this was interesting. We, we see Trigon's dashboard here, and Trigon is being a giant demon from hell. Uh, he is unbeatable. You cannot punch him. You just have to banish him apparently. Um, we can see here, yeah, heroes cannot damage him. They can't even enter the location where he is because he's so big. That's cool. That's a really cool new feature that I haven't seen in a villain before. Uh, his bam is covered, but it looks like what we can see that when he bams, he deals two damage to each hero in his location, which is weird because you can't be in his location. That's interesting. I missed that before. That is deal two damage to each hero in Trigon's location. So maybe it's so maybe the card is covering it, but maybe it'll say one damage in each adjacent location too. Because if you can't enter where he is, how's that going to work? His villainous plot, you can see on the side here, the heroes lose when there are 12 crisis tokens in play. Uh, and he's going to be dropping a lot of those, I assume. And you can also play him on hard mode where nine crisis tokens is enough to lose. And the heroic goal is also covered, but you have to clear something. And then he comes with two challenge cards that you can add to the challenge deck where you can throw Trigon into any other villain battle just for masochistic kicks, I guess. And then the Deathstroke cards, they were surprisingly conservative with how much they showed us. It looks like he's got his own unique under pressure thing, which I like. I like that new feature a lot. Uh, but then he's got these assassination technique cards, which Andrea said you draw one of these on your turn and it basically represents him trying to assassinate you. And whatever you draw, like if you draw that move heroic heroic card, you have to have those symbols in your hand when you draw it, otherwise you take a damage. So it kind of reminds me of when Silver Samurai would roll up on you and you would have that duel, which was so much fun. I love that dueling mechanism. It kind of feels like that. That stroke would come up to you with his katanas and he would start dueling you. And if you don't have those symbols to match him while he's swinging a sword at you, you're gonna take a damage. Uh, and he's tracking you down all the time because he is the world's greatest assassin. So that is an awesome technique for Deathstroke. I love his art. I love the color. I love that they're going with the orange and black. It's perfect. I can't wait to see his dashboard. My favorite reveal of the day so far is this Deathstroke mechanism. Finally, they showed off the four locations you will get in this Teen Titans expansion. Again, I'm not familiar with these places, but I'm sure people who watch the cartoons know exactly what these are. Jump City High School, Jump City Juvenile Correction Facility, Hive Tower, and the only one of these that I knew about before, the Titans Tower. So we got these places here to play around with. 
Um, I like that uh, they, they called attention to this as well. It's pretty funny. The correctional facility um, end turn effect is that you can turn thugs into civilians there, right? They, they're, they're going through some things. That's it. They're not bad people. They just, they just needed some tender love and care. But uh, those are the four locations that you'll be able to get in that expansion box and mix and match with all the other ones. And then one last quick look at the painted versions of these characters. Man, Starfire's hair looks awesome in that. I love the Beast Boy on that traffic sign motif they have going on. That is such a dynamic mini. And then, of course, Deathstroke looks great. Raven's wings are awesome. Robin's on a circus tent. Uh, and then Trigon is just the biggest thing ever created by plastic. <laughs> and he's stepping on a phone booth. Uh, I can't wait to see size comparisons of Trigon with the Sentinels and Galactus. I really hope he's smaller than Galactus, just because people should not be bigger than Galactus. But there you have it. That was all that was revealed on this video. So that's all we got from today's video. A nice little tantalizing taste uh, of the campaign to come. And now it's time for me to check my bingo card uh, uh, that the Meeple Monkey has made for me to see if any of these characters are on it because I can't remember. So I'm going to go do that right now. Thank you for joining me here on Digital Charcuterie where we continue to make the wait for Marvel United Multiverse a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. See you next time.